Hi everybody, Cheaply Chic. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you are here. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling a little cheesy. I think it's because I went so long needing to eat lunch and I finally did. <laughs> anyway, side note, sorry. Welcome. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to share with you a junk journal that I am creating to take to my scrapbook event. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I have already, I made this journal, oh my gosh, probably back in October. I knew that going into this scrapbook event, I wasn't going to work on a 12 by 12 album this year, which is gonna be an oddball thing to do at this place, but that's okay, I'm kind of always the oddball, I think, I don't know. But anyway, I wanna work on some junk journals for myself. I have so many photos. I was trying to go through them the other day because there are some scrapbookers that, wow, they have amazing scrapbooks. They put together so many scrapbooks. That's not me. I've never been one to do the scrapbook to like, get it all out there. I've never been that great at taking pictures, remembering to take pictures, I mean. So for me, doing a scrapbook layout, I want it to take hours. I know that's weird to some people, but I want to sit down and work on a layout because it's like, it's very therapeutic to do the layout, to do the spread, to add elements, to add different pieces of art, whatever. I want it to take hours. I was always sad when a scrapbook layout would end. <laughs> so I've never been someone to have multiple scrapbooks. In fact, I only have three and I have one for my daughter, one I'm not going to share because it was the very first scrapbook I ever did. Like how old is Mackenzie now? I don't know. Six um 16 years ago maybe 14 years ago anyway it's bad you guys it's really bad and I'm not going to share that so I only have three and I am going to be sharing those on my channel every time my scrapbooking event comes around you guys ask me to share those and I never get around to it but I've already filmed them I just have to edit them anyway all of that to say this is the first junk journal that I made for this event and this one is, I have a lot of photos from my childhood that I would love to get in a journal format. I love to write. I love to um, put down my thoughts and my feelings and all of that. But I also love adding photographs and all of that. So that's kind of what this is going to be. Reminiscing back and adding a lot of the photos that I have. Now it's interesting because when I look back in the photos I have, I don't have copies of some that I thought I had so that kind of bums me out I should have spent more time preparing for this and getting a hold of my mom and asking her for some digital files but I didn't this will be the first one and it's just what I'm gonna have to work with so this is not finished I have not decorated the cover I have not finished the tassel I added a giant eyelet this is from We Are Memory Keepers, and I bought them years ago. I don't know if they still make them. I don't see them at the store. I'll see if I can find them online. I've kind of been hoarding them because of the fact that I can't find them in the store, but if I find them online, I'll leave a link down below because I do love those. This is where I'm going to put a tassel. I haven't made it yet, so I just added this lace until I do. I used a big book, like a large print book because I wanted this to be bigger since I'm going to like scrapbook in it. So the cover is six inches wide and nine and a half inches tall. I made the spine three inches. So it's really kind of a big book, but I like that because I wanted to have lots of room. You can see that I have lots of room in here to add my stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. It lays nice and flat, which I'm very excited about that. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is an old feed sack. I paid way too much for it because I bought it on eBay, but I wanted something that reminded me of my childhood that has that mustard and that green that for some reason I'm loving these days. And yeah, I just really like that. It reminds me of the 70s, so. The inside cover I have not done. I haven't done any layouts in this book yet. I've only added the papers that I wanted to be ready for me to junk journal in. So this is a book by Gwen Frostick, who is 
kind of known to our area because she was an artist, author artist from Michigan. So this book is called My Michigan that she published, I don't know, was she back in the 50s or something? I grew up in Michigan, so I used a lot of her book pages in here. I absolutely love them. So she wrote a little, you know, poem about Michigan and she does all this black art stuff, whatever that's called. So then I think I have four pages and eight signatures, four sheets of paper. And then I'm gonna do flip outs and you know, I'll tape things in and all that. So I just thought I would do a quick flip through of what this journal looks like. And I wanted to tell you how I would be using it because when I come back, I'm hopefully gonna have a lot done in it, I hope. <laughs> so I just have this double-sided scrapbook paper here. This is actually a vintage piece of stationery from my grandpa's business back in the day. The book pages in here were all books from my childhood that I loved and kept. So this was a Mr. Men book. This one specifically that I still had was Mr. Quiet. So I liked the red bricks against the red apples. I did add some tabs, but then I like forgot as I was tying in the signatures that there were more tabs I wanted to put on. So if I want more tabs, I'm gonna have to do that as I'm creating in the journal, but that's okay. So I wanted it to have a scrapbook feel and not so much of a writing feel, but I'm sure that I will add things as I go with writing. Here, this Gordon the Goat book. I never really liked it because it was scary because they got sucked up in a tornado, but for some reason, I always kept it. I would look at it, it would scare me, but I don't know, I still had the book, so I put him in here. I just think that's funny, but anyway. This book was one of my very favorite books ever. It was a child, children's poetry, book and the illustrations in it are just amazing. I've always loved that book. So I was super excited. I knew when I went to create this book that it was absolutely, if it was the only book I used, it was going to be it. So I love the fact that I can still see some of the poetry on the back of these pages. These are just pieces of scrapbook paper that I hung on to that I knew I would want to use. Another page from that Gwen Frostick book. This is a book that was about, it was called My Summer Story, and it's a little girl and her cat, and some of the photos really speak to me in my childhood because I had a black cat. It was the first cat, well, I had two black cats in a row, both named Shadow, <laughs> because I was really creative back then. And the second Shadow that I had would follow me outside and he was just super cool and super fun so I like that black cat picture there. So then I have all this blank space. I have this vintage note card here that I can do something with and I just stitched that on there. Another white blank space because this is more of my grandpa's um, business paper. Love this Gwen Frostick picture and I liked how the blue played off of that paper. I specifically saved this piece of paper because this whole white page in this one frostic book and then that little tiny bird on a branch. I just love that. This was a scrap piece that I had here. Another page out of that poetry book that I love. And then see this book like <laughs> I must have read that book so many times. So if you have things from your past that you hang on to. If you're like me, you like to hang on to them. You don't want to get rid of them, but at the same time, you never look at them. Like maybe twice a year you pull it out and look at it, maybe. This is a fantastic way to use the things that matter to you. Yes, you have to rip the pages out. Yes, that is hard. <laughs> but at the same time, I love that it's in here and I am just gonna enjoy it so much more because of that. So anyway. This is another page out of that, my summer storybook. I grew up with a lake. I swam every day, so that spoke to me. And then again, part of the book that spoke to me, that reminded me of myself, I put in here. This time I got smart and I made this little like fold so I could add the book pages in. If I wanna add more pages to this book, 
I'll end up doing that as I'm creating in it. Some Tim Holtz paper, another fabric tag. I also grew up on about 50 acres, most of them wooded. So I love the image of the woods here. I had a pretty rockin' childhood, you guys. I will say so, if you're a nature person, which I was. <laughs> Some ledger, Little Miss Trouble, another one of those books I still had. This is not from the 70s, but I absolutely love that green frame, and I thought it would be a beautiful space to put a photograph. So I have that in there. Plus it's called Caressing Butterfly, which I think is nice the nature lover that I am. Another page of that nature book. And then the book about the cat. I do love my cats, always have. So I just added that picture there. I thought that was super cute. This is a piece of stationery that I had left over. I used to collect stationery when I was like 12, so this is some that I have left. I just glued it on there. I think I covered up something on a Tim Holtz paper that just didn't make sense to my theme. So, pretty piece of paper here. This is the poem of the swing. I already know because of that little boy. See how he's kicked off of his socks and shoes? Just love that. More of that poetry book. This is an envelope I put in the center of the signature. I have not glued it shut yet since I'm not sure what exactly I will be doing on this page. So just to hold it closed, I just have this little clip for now holding it. Other side, that book page. The next signature. Now this is legit, you guys. Like I said, my cat would follow me everywhere, so I just look at this and it just takes me back. And I love that. I absolutely love that. So I liked mixing the patterns here and the colors. It'll be interesting to see what I can do with that. This is the one place where I did make a pocket in the book. Otherwise, I just plan on adding them as I go. And here's the center of the signature here. And then Mr. Owl, he's out of that cat book too. More poetry book. Then here, this is the only fabric tip-in that I added in this red background. I really like that pattern and I love this lace so much. More blank space. Another Gwen Frostic page with a really pretty poem. Love that so much. Oh, I love that book. I'll leave a link. Um, if any of you are interested in this Gwen Frostic book, because it is a beautiful nature book for all kinds of journals, I'll leave a link in the description box down below to where you can find that. Another Gwen Frostic image. More turtle images. There was a snapper that lit. I always, <laughs> I always thought of him as one snapping turtle, but really they were. There was all kinds of snapping turtles. But I have two scars on my body: one on my kneecap and one, yeah, one on my rear end from this little snapper turtle dude in the lake. So. I don't know. I had to add. <laughs> I had to add him because that is definitely a memory of my childhood. Love this so much. Super, super cute. I'm so excited to play in this. I can't wait. And I can't wait to share it with you guys either. Beautiful book image there. And then the last signature, I stitched some lace on, another Little Miss Trouble Book page, 
This time I used one of those poems out of the book to make a double pocket. I guess that wasn't the only pocket, sorry guys. There is a double tuck here in the center. I love that milk vessel image. Another piece of lace that I love. I actually found this old tablecloth at Goodwill and it reminded me of a tablecloth that my mom used to have on our on our table growing up. Only hers was orange, but that's okay. I was so happy to find that lace. And that's it. That's the end of that journal. So I'm very excited to play in this and start creating in this. I don't know if I'll finish it up. Probably not. I don't know if I'm going to start working in it and just like freeze up and not know what to do. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see what happens. And I will definitely share it with you guys when I get back. And hopefully I will be sharing some process videos as well in the upcoming months ahead. So I'm super excited. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all next time. Bye.